every single minute is fear. In your heart, in your mind, you can't breathe properly. That must just be a terrifying way to live. It is, but it's better than death or my children being killed. For more than 20 years, this woman was forced to work 16-hour days without being paid. She's been beaten, threatened with rape, and even miscarried from the intense workload. She's been sent away to work in a foreign land, away from her children, and was told if she stopped, they would all pay the ultimate price. Much of her exploitation happened in the UK, including in a college. A modern-day slave, hidden in plain sight. If this is my destiny, so be it. If it saves my children's lives. This woman lives her life in fear because her traffickers are still out there. For that reason, we can't identify her. This type of access is rare and has taken months of planning. My terrible journey started in my home country. Shortly after my wedding, I was 16. We're not revealing where Sarah is originally from to protect her identity. I loved school, history, science, reading. But in my culture, if you're a girl, you do not have a right to live the life that you want. Instead, I was made to work as a maid in a large house, cooking, cleaning every day. But I never saw any money. It always went to my husband. If I didn't work, my husband would beat me up. Other people would join him, sometimes as many as four people. My skin was cut open so many times, but I was never taken to the doctor. I was so scared my body would shake. I'm not sure when I came to the UK. What I do know is that I had had two children because they were taken away from me. My trafficker said if I didn't follow orders, my children would be killed. And I knew it wasn't just words. I knew they would do it, probably in front of me. As a mother, how could I ever forgive myself if I saw my children killed? I just thought, do whatever you want, but don't touch my children. So, for years, Sarah did what she was told while her children grew up without her in their home country. Her husband was there too, setting up jobs for her to do and collecting the rewards for himself. I was made to work in several places in the UK, but I ended up working as a cleaner in a college. My day normally started at 3am, sometimes we finished at 11 at night. We mopped and hoovered, we cleaned the toilets, washed dishes, gardened in the snow and the rain. There were no breaks, I just tried to rest when I could. I developed arthritis, my feet were swollen and bloody. I was constantly tired and depressed, but I couldn't sleep properly because I would have nightmares. When you were in the college, why did you never call out for help? Well, I couldn't speak the language and I was terrified for my children and people seemed so busy. So I kept cleaning and people just passed me by. Teachers, students, even the police. So how did you feel when you were in the college and you saw people going about their lives, having fun, learning? I thought they were very lucky. I would daydream about being able to go to school or putting on makeup or wearing jewellery, but it was always just in my dreams. I would sleep in the corner of a storeroom. I had one blanket on the floor and another on top of me. There were other people there too, mostly women, and we would try to support each other. Sarah began to learn English. Shows like Downton Abbey ended up giving her the tools she needed to escape. One day I fell over at work. I was taken to the storeroom and left there like rubbish. My backside and legs turned black. I was in so much pain I couldn't even go to the toilet. I thought I was dying. Then one day I managed to escape. I hid at a friend's house. I was terrified but she helped me contact the Home Office and the Salvation Army who helped me. 
So how, how, how are you feeling at the moment? How, how are things going with you? The police were also informed. After answering their questions, Sarah was taken to a safe house where she was supported by Black Country Women's Aid. I wouldn't go outside for three days. I was too scared. But then someone said they'd come with me. So I decided to go. And then I did it again and again. And slowly, I started breathing properly again for the first time in more than 20 years. I remember when they gave me money and it was in my hand. The first thing I bought was sanitary pads. It was really special because before, on my periods, I had to use clothes and they became very dirty. Can you believe it? So when that happened, when you bought that sanitary pad, did you feel like you were, that was a moment where you were like, this is it? Yes, I felt free. I'd bought something for myself. It was like Christmas Day. Despite everything, Sarah is a warm and funny person. Her traffickers are still at large, possibly in the UK, and her husband is believed to be in her home country and has never been brought to justice. For the 20 years she was forced into slavery, she never saw her children and is still separated from them now. Whenever she talks about them, she cries. When I'm not thinking about what's happened, I feel free. But somehow, I'm not free. The fear is still in my heart. I want to go back to my home country and be with my children. But if I did, I'd put us all in danger. Better to accept where I am, so at least I can breathe easily now. I want to show people there's always hope. You just need one chance and help will find you.